Very welcome to the Gaia Conference 2019. Gaia is about sharing and learning. You say that data is the new oil? Well, it's not. Because once you, you, you've used the oil, it's used. With data, you can use it over and over again. You can repurpose it, you can, and once it's there, it's there to stay. It's really interesting to see how uh, what we learn from technology also informs how we look at the use case. So we've revised our entire ideas of what we can and what we can't, what we can't do, and what, what makes sense to do with this tech. So just to get you going, I'll take a video from here, and everybody starts to wave and scream and applaud. No single company and no single team in Gothenburg is big enough to compete globally alone. We as a community can. I think for me the most important thing is um, to, to really be realistic about where the technology is right now, right? And, and uh, I think yeah. that, that would already help and make sure more people understand where we are really. So, thank you all for coming. Welcome to the 2020 Gaia Conference. And I can't see my slides. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, welcome. I'm very happy to see you all here today, even if I can't see you live in the audience. Gaia is about sharing and learning. We are bottom up by engineers for engineers. Gaia is about building something good. We are about doing, not because it's easy, but because it's hard. Gaia is about you. All of us, the community of machine learning and data science in Gothenburg, building a better tomorrow together. I'm Jacob Anderson, I'm the chairman of Gaia, and I'm here to say a few words about us and introduce the day with some practical information. So, we are a non-profit association promoting the interest in artificial intelligence, machine learning and data science in the Gothenburg and surrounding area. So we are here for you, we are doing events like this, uh, but also smaller events throughout the year. So if you're interested in the community and want to learn more about machine learning and, and data science and want to engage with the community and network, uh, join us and, and uh, visit our events. Uh, but enough about us. This is a long day in front of us. We have a, a very exciting agenda starting now uh, at 9 until uh, 5 o'clock in the, in the afternoon. Uh, we begin with what we call the fairness track. Uh, starting off with our opening keynote, uh, Tore Husfeldt from Lund University. Um, then we continue with Olaf Mogren from RISE before a short break, um, where we then follow up with Carl Lindberg from Sigma Stocks and uh, Sensect. Uh, Martin Tegner from IKEA Digital finish off the fairness part of this uh, conference. Uh, after that, we have uh, the tools uh, track with Rebecca Jakobson from iSettle uh, and uh, Oscar Söderlund from Einride. Uh, then it's time for lunch. Uh, we have one hour lunch break uh, and resume again at one o'clock. Um, after lunch, we open with our second keynote, uh, Pablo Esteves Castillo from Booking.com. Uh, and this is the technical track. Uh, then we follow up with Daniel Langkilde from Anotel, um, Robert Felt from Chalmers, again a short break. Uh, before Christian Forsen, again from Chalmers. Uh, and, and then we have uh, Rocio Mercado from AstraZeneca, uh, Adam Andersson from Saab, and finishing off the technical track is Synodia Sharpie from NVIDIA. Uh, then, again, a short break, uh, and 
the day closes with our uh, final keynote or closing keynote, uh, Donny Lillblad from RICE. And before we end the day at uh, five, uh, Josef from Gaia will say a few words. So, questions. Or rather, how do you ask questions today? You do that down in the chat here uh, in the stream. Uh, our team will then select uh, questions uh, throughout the, the, each talk uh, and uh, Josef, our um, event host, will ask them to each speaker at uh, the end of each talk. So make sure to ask your questions, uh, discuss the, the ongoing talks, uh, and, and we will ask the questions at the end of each talk. If there are questions we don't have time for, uh, I'm sure each speaker will uh, answer them afterwards. I also want to say a big thanks to all our partners. Without them, we would not be able to do this conference for free. But they're also a big part of the community in Gothenburg. Uh, they all do a lot within machine learning and data science. They are all present here in Gothenburg, and they are an essential part of this conference. Networking is a big part of any conference and of any community. So in order to facilitate this uh, throughout these online conferences, we have created virtual booth um, base, based on two different parts. It's the partner pages uh, at the conference site, um, which you can find through uh, the link in, in the top uh, menu of the, of the site. Uh, on each uh, company page, they have selected articles, blog posts, uh, and white papers they want to showcase. They have also selected videos uh, informing about their tech, about what they're doing, how, how it is to work at uh, their company and so on. And finally, they, they have collected uh, job ads, uh, ads for, for you who are interested in, in uh, new opportunities. Uh, the second part of the virtual booth is the Slack channel. So to engage with the companies, uh, we have created a Slack channel in the Gaia Slack for each uh, company. There you can ask questions to their representatives, uh, you can discuss their tech, uh, you could discuss job opportunities and so on. And if you have um, more in-depth conversations, you can uh, schedule one-on-one -on -one calls with their team. So uh, go there, uh, talk with, with the companies uh, and they will take in from there. How do you join the Gaia Slack unless you are already there? It's very simple. You go to this link uh, or use this QR code. Uh, then you enter your email, receive an automatic invite uh, and create your account that way. Uh, it only takes a minute or so. Then you're in and you will find uh, these uh, Slack channels readily available. So go there right away, unless you have already uh, created your account, uh, make sure you're, you have it ready. Um, by now, I'm, uh, sure, I'm sure everyone has uh, experienced uh, video conferencing throughout the year, uh, and, and we know, all know what that is about. Uh, so make sure to rise up and, and uh, walk around and stretch your legs now and then. We do have breaks in, in the agenda. Uh, um, but also make sure to, to visit the, the virtual booth uh, throughout the day. Um, with that said, I would like to introduce our conference host, Josef Lindman Hörnlund. Uh, he's a board member of Gaia, co-founder of Moduli, has been an integral part of the Gothenburg Machine Learning Society for, for ages, or at least a few years. Um, but, uh, Maybe some of you recognize him from last year. And I, before I hand over to him, I would like to connect a bit with what he closed last year's conference with. He talked about the expectations we have on ourselves and on our companies and on us as a community uh, when working with machine learning and data science. Because we do have great expectations on ourselves to do good things and to achieve great things. We do have good expectations on our companies uh, to create value um, and build uh, awesome products. 
and we have great expectations on the community to do good things. And this is still very true. Um, a lot has happened the last one and a half year. And it's not necessarily what I did expect, uh, probably not what you expected either. But I would say this is still true and, and uh, there are still a lot of expectations um, and promises to fulfill. What I do take from the last year is an increased awareness uh, of the importance of the community. Um, the community needs to do good things and to do it fair. And with that said, I would like to hand over to Yusuf. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, it's nice to see everyone here. And uh, as Jacob says, it's, it's strange to be talking to an almost empty room, but I hope everyone out there on, on YouTube is enjoying the event and, and will have a great day today. So, um, as, as Jacob mentioned, please, please ask your questions on Slack and I will pick them up here to every speaker uh, and ask them as they come. And please ask them during the talks and not only at the end, uh, even though we will read the questions at the end. Uh, so, today we will start off with a fairness track, um, and, and fairness is something very important and something that, I mean, is really, really present. The issues with fairness and bias in statistical models is really present in, in, in the models that we're seeing right now. Um, and it's, it's really a fact that a lot of models that we have are biased, uh, especially with the rise of natural language models that we have seen in the last couple of years, a lot of them have these biases. Not perhaps because the algorithm is biased, but because the data that we build it on is biased. And as a community, it's important that we raise this fact and think about how to handle that. Should we modify the algorithm? Should we modify the data? Should we do nothing? Or should we, uh, I mean, stop using the models at all because we think they could be dangerous or whatever it is for the society. Uh, it's not only about the, um, the language models, it's also about all the different models that we're using out there. I mean, in, in credit modeling, in crime prevention or in... Uh, uh, yeah, in, in when we give scores to people in entering schools, for example, that we have seen that models are, are, are used and could be highly biased towards certain communities or certain social backgrounds and everything like that. And the two sp the speakers that we have today in the fairness track will raise different issues here and different solutions about how to handle that. Uh, I made just a few, one example here on how, how models could be biased. And this is the new re-released KB BERT model from Kungliga Biblioteket and how it's biased towards genders. The first example here is when we have a nurse and we're asking the model to fill in the gender of the nurse. Uh, and it picks, the model picks a, a female, of course. Uh, the sec sorry for the Swedish example, but I just wanted to highlight that this is really a problem with, with models that we're having. And Olof Mogren from RISE will talk more about this later. Uh, the second example is a car mechanic, where the model is supposed to fill in the gender of the car mechanic, and of course picks he. Uh, can go to the next one as well. Um, so, and this is an example from crime prediction, where we're using artificial intelligence to address um, crime prediction or, or helping the police in finding where crimes are. And that has shown to be perhaps both beneficial and highly problematic. Um, and how we should handle that in models in, and in the data that we create and, and how we're using the model in the society is something that is very, very important. 